I hear he makes twirly shadows out of the past, out of those who passed. They're never far away, always following them around. Mostly inside, where it's safe from the outside. But when they come out, oh boy, does he ever feel the consequences of unparalleled time dimensions exploding his life. Security and insecurity, I guess. Chaos is calm familiarity. So the protagonist says, they say, not they as you employ contemporarily. Why can't you let go of this thing? Looks like chewing gum, like rotten cotton candy. Can candy cotton, cotton candy rot? There's life and mites and flakes and deaths. What's up with yous? Stu was strong. He worked on the docks, too humble to show those pipes. But when he did, oh boy. Way bigger than yours, said some others. Excuse me? Okay, well, they're your muscles too. Why couldn't he have more muscles in his brain? Stu wasn't stupid. He was a poet. No, I know. To fight the brain tumor, stupid. This used to be a pillow. The cover had disintegrated, leaving just the stuffing. As you can see, they kept a memento of a memento. Pressures of socialization forced them to hide Stu. What was left of him. What was left of what they had of him. Even though they didn't want to. Well, said the protagonist, what the fuckity fuck fuck did you want me to do when everybody's singing? Run out the door, run out the door. Everybody like to run out the door, run out the door, run out the door. Everybody like to run out the door. You recognize the pattern? The materialization of people who don't exist or once existed and are no more? Oh, but they are more. You see? They're scattered throughout the past in fragments of tears and glass. There's even a little boy in all this. In fact, that's the genesis of this creation story. If you look carefully, you can see him hiding in grown-up gray matter and other gooey insides. He's so fucking amazing, I swear. The protagonist wishes we'd known him. He wishes he had known him longer himself. He wishes he'd seen him grow or that he could grow. Whoa, 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 stop, huh? That's three wishes. But no, that he, them, all of them will wholly rip the flesh off anyone who hurts that boy. Even their own. Even me. Yep. Trust me. The protagonist says to his doctor that this land is real. Well, that it's real to him. It needs to be. In this strange land, there's bugs, pigs, birds, and voices of people here and not really here, people gone and not really gone, and shining lights going through the clouds. Nothing seems real. It's all ethereal. Eth ethereal. Ethereal. But on the ground, being grounded, oh boy, that's not an easy task. Dr. A said, diaphragmatic breathing. Loving kindness meditation, grounding skills, relaxation exercises, assertiveness training. Look directly into the CD cover. Imagine it spinning. Ooh, you're in a trance. But we oughtn't downplay what happens sometimes. Why the protagonist sees head shrinkers. That ain't no ordinary dissociation. This guy Franz, oops, not supposed to say his name. Well, rather this defender and destroyer says something like this to the protagonist. There's a little piece of glass hidden on the floor. I placed it there while you thought you were sleeping. Instructions, I want you to walk all over the floor and if you step on the glass, you're a whore. And now they argue, that's fucked up. It doesn't make any sense. Why would I be a whore? Why don't you ask the little kid inside you? Fuck you, boy. Fuck you, man. Dr. A would catch you by the scruff, you pubescent anomaly. That's why I hide inside you. Until I don't. Friends, don't say my name. You're hurting me. You're hurting us. Hurting? You've been keeping a pillowy biohazard across the 30 plus homes you've lived in. You're a bioterrorist, and the special police are coming to arrest us. No, they aren't. We're just arresting ourselves, imprisoning ourselves. And who the fuck gonna wanna canna be with us? Who the fuck wanna canna be with us?